Every person in existence has an ego. It is the filter that our consciousness runs through, and we act in accordance to its desires and triggers. It is a survival mechanism. Our ego is our self-image, so it works to uphold its beliefs about itself in both a physical and a mental sense. There is a vast array of defense mechanisms our ego may perform when it feels threatened. And it's very beneficial to understand these mechanisms so when we see ourselves doing them in a way that negatively affects our life, we are better able to recognize it and stop it. I also feel like learning about these defense mechanisms has made me able to read people like a book. I feel as if I intuitively know the reasoning behind people's actions and am better able to predict how certain people will react to certain triggers. There's also a thing called the collective ego. Ego thinking can extend beyond the individual when a group of individuals come together to adopt the image of a collective entity such as a company or a country. So in the 12 ego defense mechanisms I cover in this video, I'll be giving both individual and collective examples for the defense mechanism. And yes, there are many more than 12 ego defense mechanisms, but I will be covering these 12 because I think they are especially important. Interjection is the conforming of one's beliefs in order to obtain approval of others. This one is pretty self-explanatory and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this one. When we have an opposing opinion that is not in congruence with the opinion of the majority, our ego naturally does not want the feeling of being looked down upon or being judged by others. So interjection is a common response in order for the ego to feel satisfied. An individual example would be if you are in a debate in class, in school, and quickly notice that most of the class does not hold the same opinion as you, and then you conform your opinion to that of the majority in order to feel accepted. Now for a more societal example, and this is going to be a more American example, but even if you are not American, it'll still be understandable. So here in America, we have a two-party system when it comes to the presidential election, Republican and Democrat. Republican tends to be more conservative, and Democrat tends to be more liberal. And because the presidential candidate has to represent an entire party, which is an entity composed of millions upon millions of people, the candidate must conform to the agenda of the party in order to ensure they win the support of that party and ultimately the people of America. Next we have denial, and this is when one refuses to accept the truth because they don't like it and don't like the implications that accepting the truth comes with. An individual example of this would be someone who drinks too much refusing to admit they have a problem because they don't want to go about fixing the problem. A collective example of this would be how a rather high portion of more conservative people in the United States refuse to admit the existence of major issues in the country such as systemic racism and climate change because fixing them would require a massive effort, causing little to nothing to be done about these issues in the agenda of the Republican Party. Third, we have sublimation. And this is when socially unaccepted impulses or idealizations are transformed into socially acceptable actions. And performing this defense mechanism is not always a bad thing. In fact, it can be a very good thing. A positive individual example would be if you feel very angry at your friend and want to punch him, you instead go into your garage and punch the punching bag in your garage instead. A negative individual example would be someone becoming a police officer so their tendency to take advantage of and abuse people becomes justified in their mind. A more societal example would be when the United States justified going to war in the Middle East to fight terrorism, but they actually mainly did it just to obtain oil. Next we have compensation. Compensation is the masking of negative self-concepts by developing and emphasizing positive self-concepts to make up for those perceived negative concepts. It's basically just hiding the negative aspects of oneself by putting the positive ones on display in excess. An example of this would be a guy buying a big truck to compensate for his small penis. <laughs> okay, that one was just a joke. A real one would be when a less attractive guy tries to be extra funny in order to attract women. A more collective example would be a political ad that only focuses on and overemphasizes its positive impacts it will strive to have and ignores its potential negative impacts. And that just kind of goes for advertising in general. It just focuses on positive and doesn't focus on the negative. The next one is regression. And it's simple. It's just the return to coping strategies 
from less mature stages of development. An individual example would be an older child reverting to sucking his thumb to cope with stress. A societal example would be a country reverting to more authoritarian tendencies when it is under threat. The United States did this during World War II by banning speaking out against the war, even though free speech is granted in the Constitution. Sixth, we have repression. I think this is one of the most important ego defense mechanisms to understand. Repression is the unconscious excluding of disturbing wishes, thoughts, or experiences from awareness. On an individual level, this could be when a trauma you had as a child gets buried into the unconscious because it is difficult to face consciously. It is important to note that when we repress too much, these wounds within us can fester and cause us to suffer internally and lash out in ways we would not want to. That's why I think it is important that people face their demons head on and come to terms with them. Psychedelic therapy is a very effective way to do this and will likely become mainstream in mental health in the next few decades. It was difficult for me to find a societal example that directly fit the definition considering the definition is more individual oriented, but I think a really good example that is somewhat similar is the rise of Nazi Germany. After World War I, the entire responsibility of the war was put on Germany. It was like Germany suffering a major trauma, and over time, behind the scenes and mostly under the radar of the majority of the world, this wound over time festered and led to the rise of Hitler and the Nazi party, which caused the most deadly war in all of history in World War II. Reaction formation is the masking of negative self-concepts by showing off the reverse. This is different from compensation because you aren't trying to compensate for anything. You take that negative self-concept you have and you literally try to change it. An individual example would be a gay dude trying to act extra straight in order to hide the fact that he is gay. A societal example would be North Korea trying to come across as very strong by buffing up its nuclear arsenal despite the fact they are a small country and could easily be annihilated. For the eighth ego defense mechanism, we have rationalization. And if you understand this one, it is very easy to pick up when you see yourself or other people doing it. Rationalization is justifying behaviors by substituting acceptable reasons in place of less acceptable reasons. An individual example would be when someone steals something from the store and justifies it by saying that the company makes millions anyway so it doesn't really matter, completely ignoring that stealing is wrong. A collective example would be when a country puts a certain group of people in concentration camps and treats them horrendously and justifies it by saying that the group is inferior. It is very important to understand rationalization. When you start looking, you will be amazed at how many people and groups of people do it. Up next, we have projection. Projection is when the ego defends itself against its unconscious impulses or negative perceived qualities by denying their existence and attributing them to others. Basically, it's when you project an aspect of yourself that you do not like onto another person. An example would be, let's say you're angry at your friend and you're just constantly damning them in your mind, which in turn makes you think that they are also damning you in their mind. A societal example would be when a country hates another country, but because they feel that hatred is unacceptable and not justified, they instead think that it is in fact the other country that hates them. Up next, we have displacement. And this is when one expresses feelings onto a substitute target because it is inappropriate to express them onto the original target. An example would be when a dad who just got fired from his job takes his anger out on his kid by hitting him, when it was his boss who fired him that had made him mad in the first place. Displacement is a very important one to recognize because if someone still does displacement, they are usually not very mature. I know I would not want to be friends with someone who displaces their feelings and impulses a lot. I think this is something a lot of people grow out of as they go through adolescence, but sadly, a lot of people never grow out of it. For the second to last ego defense mechanism, we have intellectualization, and this is when one uses logic and reasoning in order to block confrontation with an unconscious conflict and its associated emotional stress. So for someone who just got a job offer across the country, who is anxious about their big move, they might remind themselves of the advantages of the move and the job in order to cope with that anxiety. A more societal example comes from something I hear a lot of right-wingers, especially Ben Shapiro do in the United States. They use logic and reasoning by cherry-picking statistics in order to deny the legitimacy of serious issues such as climate change and systemic racism. 
I suppose because they unconsciously don't want to deal with the implications that attempting to solve those issues would involve, which in turn causes not a sufficient amount of work to be done about these issues. Now for the final ego defense mechanism, we have identification, and this is when one identifies oneself in association with certain causes, groups, leaders, celebrities, organizations, religions, or whatever else the individual perceives as good. This identification is the ego's way of associating itself with these positive things, making it feel good about itself. A relevant individual example I can think of is the thousands of teenage girls who have been putting hashtag BLM and hashtag ACAB in their Instagram bios in these past few months. A more collective example would be the United States associating itself with terms like freedom, liberty, and equality. I mean, they do call themselves the land of the free after all. All right, so that is it for the 12 ego defense mechanisms. It is important to know that these ego defense mechanisms are completely natural and oftentimes they are a good thing that we do them because it is our ego protecting us against stress and anxiety. But however, oftentimes they can be destructive and simply recognizing and understanding these defense mechanisms will go a long way in helping you in life, especially if you really take the time to ingrain them into your memory and you start noticing them in both other people and yourself. I find it interesting how individuals come together to create an entity such as a company or a country and this new fictional entity that was created in the minds of the individuals also develops its own ego and that these defense mechanisms still hold true for that larger entity. Ego utterly dictates our lives, so it is very important to understand how it works. And I hope this video helped you in understanding the ego. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and drop a comment for that algorithm boost. If you want to support my work on a deeper level, I do have a Patreon, so check that out link in description if you're interested. And as always guys, have a great day and peace.